Hello, Dr. Coker here, and this is the story recap of Deshaun from the Elder Scrolls Online. This is the fourth zone from the Ebon Heart Pack storyline. Previously in Stonefalls, a wounded dark elf asked you to take a letter to his cousin Dondry near the village of Cirque. That's what brings us to Deshaun. After Dondry thanks you for the letter and warns you about the plague, another Cirque villager named Arona approaches you. She tells you that the Malborn arrived to help just after the plague struck, but she doesn't trust them. She then asks you to help her find her brother, Dethesum. You ask around town, and everyone says they saw Dethesum yesterday, but don't know where he is now. Several townsfolk say they aren't feeling well, and that they need more of the Malborn's curative. Arona approaches and confirms that the plague is turning people into monsters. The two of you decide to check out the Malborn quarantine, which is at the nearby graveyard. Look, it's just like I told you. The Malborn are using the back gate. Hey. At the gates to the Malborn quarantine, you're attacked by their guards. Once you dispatch the guards and get inside, you find the place crawling with violent, vomiting people. You make your way to the catacombs and find evidence that the Malborn are turning people into violent husks. A little further in, you find a Thesum who tells you that the Malborn are the bringers of the plague. The low-dose plague. I have no idea why. <clears throat> but it's clear to me that the Malborn curative is actually the source of the disease. Whatever they're planning, you have to stop them. You then find the plague production chamber and destroy their crates and equipment. We are the cleansing fire that burns across Morrowind. To the sky! You escape the quarantine, and back at the Cirque, you and Arona discuss the likelihood that the Malborn have plans for the rest of Deshaun, not just the Cirque. You decide to journey beyond the Cirque. A little way down the road, you encounter Sergeant Nin, who says that the Malborn are appearing all over Deshaun and they are a menace. He asks if you can deliver a message to a guard in Narciss, and you agree to it. You give the message to the guard, which contains what you've learned about the Malborn. This confirms it. The Malborn need to be wiped out. Thanks for bringing this news, Traveler. I'll inform the house leaders at once. You then speak with a local sergeant, and he says people everywhere are going missing. Villagers are coming up with wild theories about what's going on, and things are only getting worse. You decide to speak with a few of them. Do the guards search for our missing people? No, because the house counselors don't tell them to. I'm not going to become a victim. That's why I'm leaving. I can't cut the throat of the plague. I can't smash its bones. I can only wait until it fills me with its blackness and takes my life bit by bit. I think the people are scared, and they should be. The Lodos Plague rushes onward, and Narciss is directly in its path. If there's any truth to the other rumors, then I'm sure the House Counselors will deal with it. So you head to the House Counselor next. Counselor Ralden says so many people are going missing, and they can't look into every lead. You offer to help investigate the disappearances. You start with the local blacksmith, who says his apprentice went missing after being disciplined for messing up their latest shipment. Curious about the shipment, you ask if you can inspect it and he says the crates were broken into but otherwise go for it. You find a note inside mentioning a concoction and saying that more is on its way. While looking around town some more, you overhear a housemaid talking about a messed up shipment, so you ask her what she was saying. Nothing at all, don't mind me. Just a servant here. What's it to you anyway? Why are you in my master's house? She refuses to reveal any more information, so you sneak into her master's bedroom to poke around. You find an incriminating journal that discusses spreading the plague and increasing its potency. Next, you speak with a dark elf woman whose husband is missing. He ships our goods. He mentioned something about a botched delivery that he had to deal with. You know what he's probably dealing with. His thirst for ale. You offer to help find him, then wander around town some more. You run into a dark elf named Naryu, who's in the middle of an intense interrogation. When you confront her and tell her she's suspicious, she tells you she's on your side and is also investigating the Lodos Plague. We've linked strange shipments to this courier. He refuses to talk, but I've never met a man I couldn't break. Take this letter to Counselor Ralden. It explains how vials of the plague were shipped into Narsus. You take this evidence straight to the Counselor. This news is very disturbing. I'm at a loss. People disappear into thin air and someone brought a plague into Narsis? That terrifies me. How could they even accomplish this without our notice? 
He says he's going to lock down Narciss, but you will be given an exception. Then he tells you to speak with Giron upstairs. He's angry about Counselor Ralden being slow to action, but anyway, he tells you to fight your way through the Malborn camps nearby to see what you can find. You find a note that reveals plans for shipping the plague all over Deshaun, as ordered by Magistrix Vox. It mentions a batch sitting at a nearby waterfall. You swim to the waterfall and see the vile substance leaking into the water. Then you notice Naryu standing nearby. Before you ask, yes, I've been following you. No, I have nothing to do with the missing people or the plague, and no, I'm not here to fight you. Ah, that's out of the way. Feel better? Now let's talk about why Giron wants you dead. You defend Giron and tell her you're working with him, but she says he sent you here to die, and she knows what's up as she's been spying on the city for weeks. She can't figure out why Giron wants you dead, though. You return to the Kin House and find that Ralden and Giron are missing. The Counselor's advisor says he's also suspicious of Giron and believes he abducted Ralden. He tells you of a secret group of villagers that may be able to help you further, and the one you seek is Slips Through Fingers. Outside, down the road a bit, you find Slips Through Fingers. Keep your voice down and act like you're helping me. I can't go into details, not here, but I know you've been trying to find the missing people for House Lalu. Mysteriously, she says follow the clues in the pack and then runs away. You see a bag nearby, and inside there's a note that says to follow the star, and she has the key. You find that star is in fact a cat, and she has a small key around her neck. You take the key and follow her lead. She leads you to a house where a handful of people are meeting in a basement, and you are greeted by slips through fingers. She tells you we need to take action, and something is wrong with Giron. I watched the Malborn abduct my ex-sister. I saw where they took her. I saw Counselor Ralden and Advisor Giron go to the same place. You have to help us. She tells you to speak with Madras, which you do, and he says it's time to get armed and forcefully get the missing people back, but you raise concerns about attacking city guards. I don't want to fight them. They have their orders, but they're wasting time. Every second that passes is another second our people remain in danger. Sometimes you have to resort to drastic measures to save the ones we care about. You agree to help them, and Madras says to begin by stealing weapons. You speak with the blacksmith, who's working with Madras, about the plan. He says he will create a distraction so you can steal the armory keys from the kin house. With the armory keys in hand, you steal as many weapons as you can quickly. I'll take those and get them to the others. He tells you to wait at the kin house and he'll send a messenger. At the kin house, the counselor's advisor says he will gather the house guards and back you up. Then Slips Through Fingers approaches and says Madras's people are heading for a fight they are going to lose and she tells you which way they went. Madras gave me this key to give to you. Now please hurry. It was scary watching my friends try to figure out which end of a sword to hold. You fight your way through the Malborn hideout and find Giron at the end. After defeating Giron, you search the hideout for survivors. What a fool I am. I led a bunch of untrained town folk into a battle they couldn't win. They're all dead, and it's my fault. Madras tells you that the Malborn were infecting corpses to amplify the plague's potency, then bleeding them into the water supply. You leave to get help. Just outside, you run into Varen, the counselor's advisor, with the house guards beside him. He tells you that a contingent of troops is in the ruins now to rescue survivors. You tell him that Giron was using captured villagers to strengthen the plague and poison the water supply. So that's why he wanted Narsis sealed. He wanted easy access to more plague carriers. House Lalu will make sure no one drinks the water until the lake is cleansed. Varen says he will take care of the wounded, then suggests you speak with Naryu back in town. 
Naryu says, House Hlalu troops were ambushed by forces led by her target, an alchemist she's been after this whole time. She isn't concerned about house troops, but says we could join up with them against the common enemy. You approach the Hlalu captain and ask about the status. We sent in some scouts to assess the situation, but they haven't returned. I don't want to march in there blindly, but we can't wait much longer. You offer to head in and find the scouts. You find a wounded scout who tells you what she knows. The alchemist who created the Lotus Plague. Murdendril. He's making it stronger. More potent. The Morbon plan to smuggle it into Mournhold. Infect the whole city. There's no time. You need to stop them. She mentions that the Malborn can't ship their crates without official paperwork, so you offer to steal their papers. You kill a few Malborn until you find the papers and return to the scout. Spread out! She thanks you and tells you where you might find more scouts. You find another scout who says he is the last survivor, but he has valuable information. He says there are wards that protect the Malborn from the plague and that you should break them. Then Captain Deril comes to find you and says Varan's forces are helping out. You tell him about the protective wards and that you've destroyed them. Ah! That changes things! We've spotted the plague shipment they planned for Mournhold. I want those crates destroyed, but I need my troops at a safe distance when it happens. He tells you they've arranged for archers to shatter the crates from above and asks you to defend the archers. Afterwards, you find Varan and Naryu, both concerned that Captain Deril is too close to the plague fog and might become turned. You leave to seek out the captain. You find that the captain is fine, but he's curious about you. By Aeum! You've run through a gauntlet of plague and death, yet you aren't sick! How? Neither of you are sure how this is possible, but anyway, he says the alchemist, Merdendril, is now cornered and it's time to kill him. On your guard. We don't know what's up ahead. Entering his lair, you find notes and recipes that may aid in the development of a cure. But you are attacked by a plagued husk, and Captain Deril is turned, forcing you to kill him. You didn't think it would be that easy, did you? Immediately after this, the alchemist attacks, and you kill him as well. Outside, you inform the scouts that both the alchemist and Deril are dead, and that you have notes that may help others to develop a cure. They say the fog is cleared and the village is returning to normal. Then Varan thanks you for your help in the contract, making it clear that he works for the same organization as Naryu. You leave for Mournhold to spread the word of what transpired. You inform the Ordinator of the news. So the rumors are true? Do Mark take the Moorborn and the trouble they've caused? We won't let the gorge fall again. You're then asked to check in with Register Reval, who says the Sacred Lady Amalexia has requested your presence at the temple. As you approach the temple, you find Naryu outside who's been waiting for you. She tells you the Malborn are in this city already, then you tell her you're about to speak with Amalexia. Wait, you got a date with the Sacred Lady? You really are something. Look, tell her about the Malborn. Maybe she'll let you look into this. I normally wouldn't think of using her, but this is important, and I know Amalexia cares about the city. You agree, and she says she will investigate the Malborn in the meantime. Amalexia praises you for helping the people of Morrowind, and gives you a lantern as a special gift. She then asks what troubles you, and you tell her of the Malborn. She trusts your judgment, and grants you the authority to investigate the Malborn in Mournhold. After your meeting with Amalexia, you find Naryu at the local tavern, the Flaming Nyx. She says she's noticed House Drez acting suspiciously, and she wants you to track down their courier. The courier carries wine with him, so Naryu suggests you follow him and put sleeping potion in his wine, then steal the House Drez farm key so you can snoop around the farm. You add the potion to his wine, then follow him from a distance.
With the house dress key in hand, you head to their farmhouse. In their home, you find that their fire pit reeks of charred flesh. Then you find a secret trap door just as Naryu enters the house. Well, well, well. See that? That's an impressive trap door for a simple farmhouse cellar. I love it when my hunches pan out. The two of you enter the trap door, which ends up leading to the Mournhold sewers. You fight your way through the sewers, then after a moment, Naryu is surprised to see more Daedric wards in use. Wards? They're active. That's impossible. No one outside my organization should have been able to activate them. If the Moorborn are using this base, the entire city is in danger. She leaves to tell Varen about the wards and asks you to find out what you can from whoever activated them. You find the sewers to be crawling with Malborn, but you fight through them until you come to a large room where you are ambushed. You notice a hostage nearby, then Almalexia intervenes and saves both of your lives. Shall not be I shall take her to the Mage's Guild where she can receive care. Find her there. You head to the Mage's Guild to meet with the hostage, Verona. Verona says she was kidnapped by the Malborn because she's a member of House Telvani. Members of House Telvani are known for their knowledge of all types of magic. I guess they assumed I could make the old wards active again. I did what they wanted. Eventually. It was either that or... I don't want to think about it. She then says the Malborn are planning an attack and that you need to speak with an Ordinator. I was told to convey upon you the gratitude of the Tribunal, and to inform you that the Sacred Lady still has need of your services. So you head back to the temple to meet with Amalexia. You find Amalexia outside the temple, and she's furious because the Malborn have entered and opened Daedric portals, defiling the temple. You enter the temple, kill the Daedra inside, and close their portals. Once you've cleared the temple, Almalexia is pleased with you and she informs you that it was Magistrix Vox who opened Oblivion Gates to fill the temple with Daedra. She says you need to get into the High Temple, which will require the blessings of each of the Tribunal. You've already got the blessing of Almalexia, so she refers you to trials you may undertake to earn the blessings of Vivek and Sothasil. Sothasil's trial involves fixing a broken mechanical arbiter, then defeating it in combat. Fixing the arbiter involves attacking other dwarven machinery to salvage their parts. You get the Arbiter to work, then defeat it. Comprehending the necessity of imperfection, you have earned the blessing of Sothasil. After earning the blessing of Sothasil, you head over to Vivek's trial. Vivek's trial is to test your sense of judgment. You speak to several spirits to learn about a murder. Two men had a duel, and one died, but it's because the other duelist's blade was poisoned without his knowledge. After speaking with those involved, you pick who's to blame and earn the blessing of Vivek. Through your wisdom and judgment, you have earned Vivek's favor. Receive our blessing. As you enter the High Temple, you are confronted by a Malborn priest. She will destroy you all! After defeating him, you return to Amalexia outside. You tell her that the Malborn helped Vox escape with a hammer called the Judgment of Veloth. She says she'll look into the Judgment of Veloth, but urges you to pursue Magistrix Vox, who she believes is headed toward the village of Selfora. As you approach Selfora, an injured Dark Elf warns you that something very bad just happened in town. I don't know what happened. The elders were gathered in the center of town. Then there was a flash, and suddenly spirits were everywhere. You escort her to the inn. Elenisi? Thank the three you made it. We feared the worst. Have you brought help? It was a close call. I'd be dead if not for this traveler's assistance. You've chosen a bad time to visit Selfora, stranger. Spirits roam the streets and unquenchable fire consumes the town. Selfora is lost. Don't be too hasty, Meldris. Our new friend is powerful. I've seen what the traveler can do. 
Elenisi says there may be more survivors at the village temple, so you head that way. Inside the temple, you find a forlorn spirit who does not attack you, but he's distressed and his memory of what happened is fuzzy. He's confused, but he says maybe the special water they have downstairs will quench the magic flames in the chamber of the tree. You test the holy water on the small magic fire, and it works, but you are attacked by an angry spirit. He's dead. You will not save her. You return to the forlorn spirit upstairs to find that putting out the fire has had some effect. The fog begins to clear, but so many memories rush in. What you fought was an echo of Magistrix Vox. She left it here to bind the spirits to this place, part of her punishment of Selfora. Then he shares a brief memory of himself meeting with Vox, in which she says she plans to attack the tribunal. That's all he remembers, so he tells you to take the holy water and go save more people. Who are you? How did you get past the flames? I knew someone would come. I never gave up hope. Returning to the inn, Elenisi thanks you for rescuing people, then gives you a key to the town hall and says her father is still missing. In the basement, you find her father Tiden's body next to a note from Magistrix Vox. The note sounds threatening, and it says she's disappointed with his last response. The forlorn spirit appears and reveals that he is Tiden. He says his spirit is bound to the Echo of Vox you defeated earlier, and that you must defeat it again, but this time you can use the decanter of holy water to trap it. Go to the crater in the middle of town. When you get there, I'll summon Vox's Echo. Defeat the Echo again, but this time... Draw it into the decanter. At the crater, much of Tiden's memory has returned and he fills in some of the gaps. I showed you Magistrix Vox's arrival and how she demanded we join her. Treason! We would not do it. When we refused, she decided to make an example of us. She used St. Veloth's judgment to tear a hole in Selfora. He says this event caused the people's souls to be separated from their bodies, and it can't be undone, but trapping the Echo of Vox will banish the corruption from Sulfora. The two of you get started. Come forth, Echo of Vox! Come forth, vile parasite! <laughs> As Tiden's spirit is set free, he says to tell his family he loves them. You return to his daughter, Elenisi. She is heartbroken to learn of her father's death, but proud that he stuck to his principles. As you say your goodbyes to Sulfora, an acolyte approaches with more bad news involving Vox at the Shrine of St. Veloth. Oh, it happened so fast. Magistrate Vox called forth St. Veloth himself and then unleashed a, a wave of destruction. The spirit of the saint himself seems to be fading. I, I ran all the way here to find some help. Can you help us? You approach the shrine and speak with the vestige of Saint Veloth. Magistrix Vox shattered my reliquary and reduced me to my current state. You need my blessing to defeat her, but as I am now, I cannot bestow it. You offer to gather the pieces of his reliquary for him. Then you find a surviving priest who tells you Veloth's skull was also stolen. It was taken to a nearby crypt, so you head that way. The vestige of Saint Veloth finds you and you've renewed his hope. 
Take it to the dais and place it with the reliquary pieces. Vox believed that when she shattered my reliquary, she removed me from this battle. Your deeds have foiled her scheme. He mentions that he once used his hammer for defending his people, but Vox now wields it for revenge. I am returned to my customary ethereal vigor. Thanks to you, my child. The saint says Vox is using his hammer to trap souls, but with his blessing, it won't work on you. Instead, it will send you to where the souls are trapped, allowing you to free them and break her power. As you're leaving, Acolyte Eldry says she's been taking Dramora hearts from the ones you've recently killed, and now asks if you'll deliver them to a healer named Dalen. He can use them to make healing potions. Yeah! You give the hearts to healer Dalen, and he is thankful. Then an ordinator from the same camp informs you that he was instructed to wait for the one who carries Veloth's blessing, which is you, and says Amalexia will appear and speak to you here. You received Veloth's blessing and have come to the hollow, just as I have foreseen. The blasphema Vox has sealed herself behind powerful wards. The goddess tells you about three wards you must destroy to enter Vox's lair. You fight your way through to them and destroy all three wards. You then find that the entrance to Vox's lair is unsealed. Just inside, a forgotten spirit named Aspira taunts you, saying neither Amalexia nor Veloth can help you here. But she says she is your friend and will reveal memories to you that explain how Vox came to be this way. In the first memory, Aspira says Vox once willingly served the tribunal. Watch, listen. This is how Vox's dark journey begins. You see a moment where Vox's son chooses to side with the Daedra as she pleads with him to trust the tribunal. Aspera then says her son tried to steal the judgment of Veloth, but he was caught and punished. Magistrix Vox witnessed her son's torment. She was powerless to intervene. Then you witness his punishment from Amalexia as Vox begs her to be merciful. Aspera says this pushed her too far and she went mad with grief. False gods. False justice. Miron was right. The Daedric princes must return, and blood must flow! Go! Gather your followers! Spread your plague! Wield the hammer! With it, you can devour living souls and unleash your true power. <laughs> Inexplicably, the image of Vox in the memory turns to you. You think to hide from me, intruder? I see you. <laughs> but the memory fades and Aspera speaks with you some more. You saw the pain that drove Vox to unleash the plague and rally them all born to glorious acts of violence. Now you understand her motives, and are finally ready to face her. She says you have to die by the hammer in order to set the souls free, but not to fear since you have Veloth's blessing. You proceed and confront Vox. You shattered my wards. You entered my hollow in service to a false god. I am impressed you made it this far, but your interference ends here. She strikes you with the hammer, and you immediately find yourself in the realm of trapped souls. You speak with other souls and tell them you will set them free, but they have no memory of any existence before this one. They are also unable to interact in their world. Oh, what I would give to be able to feel anything. To feel the touch of wind on my face, my hand on another's. They mention that the Keeper and his puzzles bind them here. You solve the puzzles and confront the Keeper. This frees all souls except one, that of Vox's son, Miram. With some help, he remembers bits of his former life, including that he murdered priests of the tribunal. Murder? Yes. And it isn't over, is it? Because now my mother murders in my place. Come, I'll open the portal to her domain. Together we'll stop her. This has gone on long enough. You destroy three soul whales to reveal Vox. Enough. Feel the 
wrath of Veloth's judgment. With Vox defeated, many souls are freed, and Amalexia appears to thank you and to restore Veloth's judgment. She says your work here is done, and the tribunal will work to restore Morrowind, then opens a portal to Mournhold for you. Mounting up and moving on, you encounter a dark elf named Gonthis who asks for your help. He says there are mysterious murders happening in Shadowfin, and Vice Canon Rondar sent him to find help. You make your way to the town of Stormhold in Shadowfin and find Vice Canon Rondar at the Fighters Guild. And thus concludes the story of Deshaun. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next video in this series, Shadowfin. Until next time.